Let's see another example of an action that is actually useful. We learned about how the actions work and how to trigger the action. Let's do something useful. This is inspired from a problem that one of our participants had. They said, we have a layer of farms and we are doing some editing. Many times we want to do some editing where we want to select a farm and find all the farms that have adjacent boundaries. And we want to edit those. So can, I'm trying to build a plugin where I can easily select all the neighboring farms for a given farm. So I can select and I will select all the neighboring farms. And as usual with many of those such queries, my answer was, hey, you can build an action. And you know this was inspired from this where you can click on a feature and it'll select all the features which are connected to it. So we'll select all the neighbors. Let's see how this works. Open up QGIS in your data package. We have this geo package called neighbors.geo package. So we'll start a new project. And from your data package, let's just go and find this geo package called neighbors. Expand that inside of that there's a project. Go and open up this project. This has got this one layer where we have just displaying the state names. This is the all the lower 50 states of the United States. And we'll just use this as a reference to implement where we want to click on a state and select all the states which have adjacent boundaries. We'll see how we can define an action for that. This project is saved inside a geo package. So from your browser, you have to expand the geo package and locate this neighbors project and open it up. Let's define the action. I'm going to go right click properties, create a new action. We'll create a Python action. We'll name it select first degree neighbors. We'll also select second degree neighbors. That means neighbors of neighbors. So first we'll write code for the selecting first degree neighbors. We'll keep the default scope. And in the Python code, let's go and find the code for in the section 12.2. We have the code here in step number three. Let's go and copy paste this code. I'm gonna explain this in a while. When the action is triggered, we'll say go and find the ID of the feature that you just clicked on and the layer where you are triggering the action from. We'll get a reference to the layer. And then we have this function here, which says given a feature ID, find all the neighbors. And it's essentially saying for getting all the features within the bounding box of this layer. So you don't want to go and iterate through all the layers. It's instead of doing layer.get features, you can say, give me all the layers that are within the bounding box of the current feature. This will use the spatial index and only get the features which are intersecting with the current feature. We get those features, we check if they're intersecting the geometry and we get the list of those. We are using a list comprehension here for making our code simpler. So list comprehensions we learned earlier, you can write a for loop like this for C in this, give me C dot ID. You can also add an if condition. So if the geometry intersects, we can add that ID. So we get a list of IDs which are neighbors and once we get the list of neighbor ID features, we can call this function layer.selectbyids. This is again part of the QGIS vector layer class. We can say select by IDs and set all the selections here. Let's save this and try to trigger this action. We have the select first degree neighbor action. And now when I click on a particular polygon, it's going to go find all the intersecting features and then select all the features which are intersecting and which are not the same feature. So it's going to go and select all the neighbors. Try this out, see if we're able to create and trigger this action. You'll find the code for this in step number three. Let's write one more action just to say how we can have multiple actions on the same layer. We can take the code from section five and create an action to, for selecting second degree neighbors. Let's just copy paste this code. I'm going to click new action, Python, say so select second degree neighbors, paste it here and click OK. So now we have two actions defined on this layer. You can see that is first degree neighbors, second degree neighbors. And now if I select second degree neighbors, it's going to go and find neighbors of neighbors. If I select first degree neighbors, it's going to select only the first degree ones. And this is also gives you an idea of how to structure your actions code. Well, actions are supposed to do only one thing. So if you say, I want to have a plugin, which has, we can select neighbors and also second degree neighbors. How do I have a button for that? Well, try to separate out the functionality into two actions so that you can trigger whatever you want in a single scope. So try to limit the scope of what actions can do. This will help you write in actions in a more succinct way rather than trying to implement everything in a single way. Because actions are typically triggered 
on a single click. You don't want to have a very complicated code with a lot of conditions and you don't want to do multiple things with it. So we have this first degree neighbors. You can go and select second degree neighbors. And you can see it works quite fast because it's using spatial index and again, QGIS is able to process this quite fast. We have a problem though. If I want both first and second degree neighbors of a feature, I can click this. If I go and select second degree neighbors, the first degree neighbors go away. What if I want to select both first and second degree neighbors? Can I change something in my code that will keep my initial selection and add to the selection instead of replacing it? That's our exercise. Now you can explain what's the next exercise.